All oh, right, we've got a good question to answer at the Ask Good Game desk this week. Hex, let's go. All right. OK, this week we've got a question, well, more of a comment, really, from Kate. It makes me very sad when I see you two young people reviewing war and conflict games. I've worked as an aid worker in a number of wars, and they're not a game. Real people, including children and young people like you, are killed, injured, and their lives destroyed. Normalising or trivialising war by promoting it as a game is deeply offensive and contributes to perpetuating war around the world. Perhaps you should get out and see more of the actual world and the results of war for yourselves. Then see how you feel about war and conflict games. Thanks for your message, Kate, and we do appreciate your concern. And we should say that we feel very thankful to live in a part of the world that's relatively peaceful. I'm sure it would be extremely confronting to see that kind of violence up close. Yeah, absolutely. When we were putting together our special episode on war games a few weeks ago, we especially wanted to look at games that do explore the horrible realities of war and the lasting impact it has on the lives of soldiers and the civilians involved. Games like This War of Mine and Valiant Hearts strive to make us understand the terrible consequences of war on a very human level. And we thought they provided a good balance to the other games in the episode. As the gaming industry has matured, we've definitely seen a shift towards more intellectual explorations of the subject. But, Kate, you're right. There are also a lot of gung-ho action games that do use war as a subject for pure entertainment. But I would like to think that gamers are able to see those types of games for what they really are. Over-the-top Hollywood experiences and little more. Yeah, I'm not sure anyone would confuse them with what war is actually like, or at least I hope not. In our war special, we spoke to Army veteran Nate Seraphine, who made the point that even soldiers who play military shooters don't view them as anything other than popcorn entertainment. FPS games, just because they're in the military, uh, they take them just like everything else. It's, it's a game. Uh, it's not realistic, no matter how realistic the developers try to make it. I think the appeal of those games is largely down to the competitive itch that they scratch. And there's always going to be a place for those sorts of games, which is why it's our job as games critics to play and discuss them on the show, along with all the other types of games out there. We enjoy playing first-person shooters just as much as we enjoy adventures in teenage angst, racing fast cars, or even building castles. In saying that, though, Kate, all of us here at Good Game work very hard to have quite a critical eye towards anything that's overly gratuitous. We do our best to make sure that we don't glorify the violence in those games and provide balanced coverage of all genres. But also, we enjoy expressing our excitement for a well-made game at the time, violent or not. And in the case of shooters, articulating exactly why we're excited about them within the context of the genre, be it mechanics, good combat, or whatever it is that makes it a great game. And onto one of your other points, I do think it's a little bit unfair to say that games contribute to perpetuating war around the world. Wars have been a part of human history and human nature since the dawn of our species, all without the help of video games. And as an artistic medium, games will continue to explore the extremes of any subject. They are a reflection of the world around us. I think we'll always have big action shooters, just as we'll always have thoughtful, poignant games that do make us think carefully about the moral consequences of our actions. And with that, I think we should move on to our year review for this week. And how about we take a look and see what people thought of the latest Monster Hunter? Good idea, Hex. Let's see. OK, well, the Bat Gamer was clearly impressed, writing, This is one of the best Monster Hunter games I've ever played. The only thing I don't like, it is game, is there no farm? Four and a half stars. Izunadrop was also a big fan, saying, I have a lance that is a shark and a shield that is no swimming sign. Five out of five. They didn't actually rate it, but they probably meant five stars. Yes, but if you don't use the form properly, the score does not count. Much like Kianush here, who wrote a whole heap of reviews saying stuff like, perfect, five stars, great, one and a half stars, or that was awesome, three and a half stars. <laughs> I don't know what to think now, Kianush. <laughs> well, if you'd like to leave us a review, then you can do so via our app or on our website. <laughs> 